Have you ever wanted to learn piano but you don't know how to get started? Well you've come to the right place because today I'm going to teach you the very basics of piano. I'm gonna love you unconditionally. Take your pain, take your burden, swing your hurt and you can place it on me. No, no. Hey guys, it's Dylan Lane and today I'm going to be teaching you the very basics of piano so that you can get started. In this lesson, you'll learn 10 things. You'll learn your finger numbers, the piano key names, how to find any note on the piano, correct hand positioning, the difference between a whole step and a half step, how to play any major or minor chord, and how to play some of the most popular and easy piano patterns so that you can then take those and apply them to any chord for any song you want to learn. Before we get started, I've made you a cheat sheet to go along with this video. It will have everything I talk about in this video typed up so that you can download it and have it on your computer or your device, or you could print it out to have right in front of you whenever you're practicing. I'll post a link to that cheat sheet in the description box down below. First, let's talk about the piano itself. A piano or keyboard traditionally has 88 keys. There are some varieties that will have under 88 keys, but this is just the standard number. Of the 88 keys on the piano, 52 of them are the white keys and 36 of them are the black keys. If you don't have an 88 key keyboard or piano, you'll still be able to apply the majority of this information from this lesson. Now let's talk about the names of the keys on the piano. Quick side note, I may use the word keyboard as well as the word piano throughout this tutorial and just know that anything I teach you in this tutorial could apply to both the keyboard and the piano. Rather than label each of the 88 keys on the keyboard with numbers, 1 through 88, we label them with letters. The letters used to label the piano keys are A through G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. When we get to G, we start back over at A. So this gives us seven letters. How do you know which of those seven letters are assigned to which keys on the piano? Well, first of all, it's important to remember that if we have 88 keys on the piano, but only seven letters to work with, that means we will be repeating letters throughout the entire keyboard. For example, as I showed you earlier, if we start on A and go B, C, D, E, F, G, the alphabet starts back over at A, so this would be A, and then that would repeat all the way up. The same rule applies when going backwards on the piano. So if we start at A, and then go to G, then F, E, D, C, B, A, it would start back over again at G, F, and all the way down. So how do we know which letter goes with which piano key? First, take a look at all of the black keys and notice how they're in groups of two and three. Two, three, two. They alternate between groups of two and three. Two, three, two. Here's a trick. Go to a group of three black keys, find the middle one, and then go directly to the right. And that's an A. If you know A on the piano, that means you can find any other note as long as you know the alphabet forwards and backwards. Check it out. If I play A, then I just go up the alphabet, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then what do we do? We start back over at A. A, B, C. So let's try that trick again. Here's a group of three black notes. Find the middle one. Go directly to the right. And there's A. Now let's go backwards. A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. And we can confirm that's A because we're at another group of three. Here's the middle one. Go directly to the right. And there's A. One more time, just in case it wasn't clear for any of you. To find any note on the piano, we're first going to find a group of three black notes. Play the middle black note. Go directly to the right, which is this way, or you could say up the piano, and that's A. Then the very next note to the right would be the next letter in the alphabet, which is B, then C, and so forth. Or if we go back to A, and we go this way, if we go left or down the piano, then we're going to go down in the alphabet. So what comes before A in the musical alphabet? G. F. 
by this time you may be wondering, what about the black keys? You can think about the black keys as an extension of each white key. For example, let's go back to A. There's a black key directly to the left of it and directly to the right of it. Think of these black keys as an extension of this white key, A. We'll come back to that. Really quick, I want to teach you that for every white note on the piano, there's a sharp note and a flat note. Now take that information and let's go back over to our two black notes. So here's A. This black note directly to the left is a flat, and this black note directly to the right is a sharp. If we play the A note and go directly to the black note to the left, that's an A flat. Now if we play A and go directly to the black note to the right of A, that's A sharp. Because all three of these notes start with the letter A, that's why I want you to think of the black notes as an extension of the white note. So again we have A, A flat, A, A sharp. Let's take a look at another key to help further explain. Let's go from A to D. A, B, C, D. Now that we're at D, we see that there's a black note to the left and a black note to the right. We know that these two black notes are an extension of D and that one of them is a flat and the other one is a sharp. The one directly to the left is a flat, which makes it D flat. The black note directly to the right of D is a sharp, which makes it D sharp. While it's true that all white notes on the piano have a sharp and flat, it's not always the case that the sharps and flats are the black keys. For example, let's go to C. As you can see, there's a black note directly to the right, but when we go to the left, there's a white note. In that case, we would say that the black note directly to the right is still the sharp, which makes it C sharp, and the white note directly to the left would be the flat, which is C flat. I know this might sound a little confusing because we just learned that this note is B, right? Well, some notes can have multiple names. So this could be called B, but it could also technically be called C flat. Now that you understand the names of the keys on the piano, let's talk about the difference between a whole step and a half step. It's important to understand this because it will help you with your chords as well as your scales. Why are chords and scales important? Because those are the things that you'll be using whenever you're learning your favorite songs. A half step is a term that we use whenever we play a note directly to the left or the right of the note we were just playing. For example, let's look at G. A half step above G would be G sharp, which we just learned. Let's go back to G. A half step below G would be G flat. Let's go to another key for example. Let's go to B flat. A half step above B flat would be B. Back to B flat. A half step below B flat would be A. Moving on to whole steps, a whole step equals the combination of two half steps. So for example, if we play G, a whole step above G would be the equivalent of two half steps. So let's go one half step up, which is G sharp. Now let's go another half step up, which would be A. Therefore, a whole step above G would be A. Let's do another example. Let's go to C. So if a whole step equals two half steps, then let's go a whole step below C. So in order to go a whole step below C, we need to go two half steps below. So a half step below C is B, and another half step below B would be B flat. Therefore, a whole step below C would be B flat. If we wanted to find a whole step above C, we would go C, then one half step up, which is C sharp, then another half step up, which is D, meaning that a whole step above C would be D. All right, we're getting closer to the part of the tutorial where you actually get to play something. But before we can play, we do need to know our finger numbers. The easiest way to remember finger numbers is to memorize that your thumbs are always one. If you know that your thumbs are one, which kind of rhymes, then you can just count two, three, four, five. So thumbs are one, 
then two, three, four, five, thumbs are one, then two, three, four, five, thumbs are one, then two, three, four, five. Try that out and I promise you'll have it memorized in no time. So just to be clear, your thumbs are number one, your index is number two, your middle fingers are number three, your ring fingers are number four, and your pinkies are number five. It's time to get our hands on the piano, which means we need to talk about hand positioning. The first step is to gently rest your fingertips on the piano keys. Next, imagine that there's a small ball underneath your hand, which means you would need to curl your fingertips in order to put your fingers around it. You'll also want to make sure that your wrist is up instead of down and resting or arched. <laughs> because that's a little extreme, but you want to make sure that your wrist is nice and even with your hand, that your fingertips are curved as if there were a ball around your hand, and that your fingertips are gently resting on the keys. It's time to talk about chords and patterns, which will set you up to play some of your favorite songs. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you four of the most popular chords that you hear in a lot of popular songs on the radio today. Those chords are C, G, F and A minor. If you don't already know, a chord is the combination of three or more notes. If I play the C key on the piano, that's a note. If I play C, E, and G, that's three notes making it a chord. So if the C key is a note, but we want to play a C chord, and we need three or more notes to make the chord, how do we know which two additional notes to play besides the C note? Remember earlier when we talked about whole steps and half steps? This is where that comes in handy. We'll use half steps and whole steps to help us figure out which notes to use for major and minor chords. In order to construct a major chord, you'll first need to start out with your root note. What is your root note? Well, if you're playing a C chord, then C, which is also the name of the chord, is your root note. Let's put our left hand finger five on the root note of the C chord, which is C. Now that we have our root note, we're going to find our second note by counting up four half steps. So one half step up from C is C sharp. Second would be D. The third would be D sharp. And the fourth would be E. That means our second note in the chord is going to be E, which we'll play with our left hand, finger three. In order to find our third note that will make up the C chord, we're going to now count up three half steps. So one half step up from E is F, the second one would be F sharp, and the third one would be G. So let's use our left hand, finger one, on G. If you play all three of these notes at the same time, you play a C chord. Now I know what you're thinking, can we apply the same thing to any single note and chord on the piano? And the answer is yes. And that's why it's fun, because if you know that trick, you can make any chord on the piano. Just find your root note. So let's pick a crazy one. Let's pick B flat. So B flat is right here. How do I know that? Well, if I know that this is A, Using our trick from earlier, finding three black notes, playing the middle, going to the right, A, then we know that this is B, because it's the next letter in the alphabet, and we know that a flat is the note directly to the left of the white note, meaning that this would be B flat. Okay, so there's our root note. Let's play it with our pinky. Now to find the next note, we're gonna go up four half steps. One, two, three, four. But I'm gonna play that with my middle finger finger three, and then we're gonna count up three half steps. One, two, three, I'm gonna play it with my finger one. And there's a B flat major chord. Before I move on to teaching you about minor chords, I first wanna teach you the three major chords that I plan to teach you today, which are C, G, and F. So we just learned C, which is C, E, G. Let's go on to the G major chord. Step number one, find your root note. What is the root note of G? G. So place your left hand finger five on G. Step number two is to count up four half steps. One, two, three, four. Play it with your finger three. Step number three is to count up three half steps. One, two, three, 
play it with your finger one. And there's our G chord. Now on to our last major chord for today, the F major chord. Step number one is find your root note, which is F. Play it with your finger five. Now count up four half steps. One, two, three, four. That's A, we're gonna play it with finger three. And then count up three half steps. One, two, three. Play it with finger one. And there's an F chord. Now that we've learned the G, C, and F major chords, I now want to move on to our fourth chord of the day, which will be A minor. This means I need to teach you first about how to play a minor chord. Now for every major chord on the piano, there is a minor chord. What's the difference? Well, there's a difference technically, which I'm going to show you, but also there's a difference in how they sound. So a major chord, let's play C major. A major chord has a very happy sound. If we play that same chord but the minor version, which would be C minor, it has a more dark and sad sound. You might have caught the difference on your own between the C major and the C minor, but just in case you didn't, I wanna go over how it's technically different. So as we saw with the major chords, we would find our root note, then go up four half steps, then three half steps. With a minor chord, we're still gonna find our root note for the first step. So for A minor, our root note would be A. But instead of going up four half steps, we're gonna go up three half steps. One, two, three, which is C. And then we're gonna go up four half steps. So it's switched from the major chord. Instead of going up four half steps and then three half steps, we're going up three half steps and then four half steps. So for our third note of the A minor chord, we're gonna count up four half steps. One, two, three, Four, which is E. A, C, and E make our A minor chord. Now I know I told you that I'm only teaching you A minor for the day, but because I want to give you another example, let's learn D minor too. For D minor, step number one is to find your root note, which is D. Then we're going to count up three half steps. One, two, three. Then four half steps. One, two, three, four. D, F, A make our D minor chord. For the final portion of this video, I wanna give you two simple, easy patterns that you can use for the chords I just taught you, which you can then use for songs you wanna learn. The first pattern I'm gonna go over with you uses what we call blocked chords. A blocked chord simply means that all of the notes in the chord are being played at the exact same time. For example, the C chord, C, E, G. If I play them all at once, that's a blocked chord. The second pattern I'm gonna teach you uses what we call broken chords. Broken chords are the opposite of blocked chords. Instead of playing all of the notes together, we'll play them one at a time. So a broken chord would sound like this. And a blocked chord would sound like this. Blocked chords, all the notes are played at the same time. Broken chords, all of the notes are played individually. In the blocked chord pattern, we're gonna start with the C chord. So we're actually gonna use our right hand, finger one on C, finger three on E, finger five on G. Then we're gonna take our left hand and we're only gonna play the root note of each chord we play. So let's put our finger five on C. If we play those all together, it'll sound like this. Now we're going to count out loud, one, two, three, four, and we're gonna play the blocked chord in our right hand on every single number, but in our left hand, we're only going to play the root note on number one. So first, I'm just going to do the right hand. One, two, three, four. Now, just the left hand. One, two, three, Four. Notice that I held down the root note in my left hand for one all the way through four so that it will ring out and have a nice sound. Now I'll do hands together. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to apply that same exact pattern to each of the chords we learned. Moving on to the F chord, we have F, A, C in our right hand. And our left hand will only play the root note, which is right here. So together, one, two, three, four. Moving
Moving on to G, we'll play G, B, D in our right hand, and the root note in our left hand. Hands together. One, two, three, four. Now for A minor, our right hand will play A, C, E, and our left hand will play A, which is up here, so you'll need to stretch your thumb just a little bit. One, two, three, four. And then we'll go back to C. One, two, three, four. Once you get comfortable with this, you can play it without counting. For now, counting just helps you to have a steady beat while you play. Now I'll play the whole thing straight through with counting, and then I'll play the whole thing straight through without counting. One, two, three, four, F. One, two, three, four, G. A minor, one, two, three, four, C, one, two, three, four. Now without counting. All right, moving on to our broken chord pattern, we're gonna use the same exact chords and fingers, but this time it's gonna have each note played individually instead of at the same time. Let's get our hands back on the C chord. So again, our left hand's only gonna play the root note on counts one through four, but our right hand, instead of playing a chord on each number, it's gonna play a single note like this. One, two, three, four. So notice I played C, then E, then G, then back to E. Or you could say finger one, three, five, three. We'll apply that to each chord. C, one, two, three, four, F, one, two, three, four, G, one, two, three, for A minor, one, two, three, four, C, one, two, three, four. Now without counting. And that concludes your first piano lesson. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned a ton, and I hope you're feeling inspired and encouraged to go learn more. And I just want you to know that I'll definitely be posting more piano tutorials in the near future, so come back and keep learning. And remember to play, write, and spread the light. Joy comes for free, oh it's living inside of me, dancing.